All right. I am so excited for the OOT run coming up. We have a $500 anonymous donation. <laughs> Woo! Who says, I had to donate again because once wasn't enough. Can I get an OOT hype from the audience? <laughs> All right, looks like we are already ready for this OOT run. So excited. Best of luck to you, Torjay. All right. <laughs> All right, welcome, guys. Uh, my name's Torjay, and behind me I have. Uh, I'm the weather up there. Uh, I'm glitches and stuff. I found some of the tricks in this game. No, he definitely did. And I'm uh, Richard Sage. What's up, everybody? And uh, we're gonna do an 80% rating for you guys. All right, so three, two, one, go. All right. So for any of you who's, who has played this game casually, you probably know that you have to complete the first three child dungeons and then go adult, complete the five adult dungeons, defeat Ganondorf, and then defeat Ganon to beat the game. Now. At top pace, this is a 17-minute run, so that's obviously not what we're going to do here. So, um, <laughs> glitches and stuff can, can explain a little bit about the history of how it's, how it's gotten to the point where we are today. Yeah, so um, originally, well, the casual route for this game, you have to beat the child dungeon so that you can get access to adult. Then you have to beat all the adult dungeons so you can get access to Ganon's tower and uh, also to get uh, the light arrows to actually beat Ganondorf with. Uh, it was found out at some point that you actually could skip the child dungeons and also you only needed to beat the spirit and the shadow temple. Um, and so that cut off a lot of the time from the speedrun. But uh, even that could not be a 17 minute uh, run. Uh, so eventually more and more tricks were found and eventually a trick called uh, Wrong Warp was discovered which is essentially the central trick of speedrunning this game to this day. Um, even that was, a, was quite a few years ago now, so there's been a lot more optimizations and tricks found in recent years, which you'll be seeing in this run. And another thing you guys will notice is uh, we are currently running this on the Wii Virtual Console, Japanese version 1.2. And the primary reason why is for two reasons. The first of all is to get the bottle inside Deku Tree, doing a trick called Get Auto Manipulation, which you guys will see very soon. And another thing is the Japanese text. It's, it's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in the past we... Uh, they used to run it on the iQ, which was a Chinese console. And technically, the Chinese text is faster. Um, but because we, again, have to use the Wii Virtual Console, Japanese is the only like official uh, language that was, well, along with English, uh, released on the Wii. So. Also, get auto manipulation can be performed on the GameCube. True, but yeah. because it's slower, we're not going to run on that. Yeah. So, uh, to start off, what we're going to be seeing in this first little segment is uh, pretty straightforward stuff. We're going to be picking up uh, the sword, the Kokiri sword, and then collecting rupees to buy uh, the shield in the shop in Kokiri and in the forest. Um, and an another thing you'll notice is that uh, lots of times in this run, you're going to notice tours walking, like doing back walking and side hopping and stuff like that, just because it's the fastest way to move around normally in the game. There's some other movement, like types of movement we'll get yeah. into in a second. Um, but for now, you'll, you'll notice a lot of back walking, especially in this first segment. And uh, if you compare this to English uh, already, uh, the Japanese version has saved like, quite a lot of time on these text boxes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really quite a big difference. All right, here we go. All right, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. So immediately you'll see that Torch is already backflipped and backwalking, and we're going to be heading straight to the sword maze to grab the sword. This is essential so we can get the rupees. Uh, we're going to need 40 in total so that we can buy the Deku Shield and make our way to Deku Tree. Sweet. And there's the Kokiri sword. And uh, any of you that play this game, you have this game, played it casually, I challenge you to try to collect 40 rupees for the shield this quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
It, this is seriously an impressive. You know, this took a lot of time, dedication to work out. Okay, how do we get these 40 rupees perfectly on the way so that we're not wasting any extra time? Right. There's been like loads of little optimizations over the years, like half second here, half second there. Yeah. Um, actually, leaving this crawl space here is a, a pretty recent optimization um, done by targeting this rock uh, right over here. It saves about a half a second. Shout out to Rosewater. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Sweet. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's 35, and that last five rupees are going to be just behind the shop here. It's kind of funny that you steal rupees from the shop. To buy yeah. <laughs> Someone drops some change. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, conveniently in this route, uh, we just go straight to Mido and talk to him. In previous routes, we used to do a trick called Mido Skip, where you could clip underneath and go straight to Deku Tree and can finish the run. But uh, in this particular run, we have to pass Mido three times. So it's actually just a lot faster just to talk to him straight up. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a bit of setup time to skip Mido. So instead of doing the setup to skip him like three times, we just talk to him once and then we can zoom past him the other two times. So Torch is going to pick up a stick here. Uh, that will be useful for quite a few reasons, actually. Sticks are really useful items. They do more damage than the sword. And then he's going to do a jump slash into this cutscene, which is nice. going to place Link a lot closer to the Deku Tree. That was really good. All right, so just like that, this first segment is just about done. We've got Kokiri Sword and the Deku Shield. Um, and then upcoming is one of the hardest parts of the run. Um, it's referred to as get item manipulation. We'll explain it as we go, um, but the whole point behind it is, uh, like we've said, it glitches a bottle into in your inventory, whereas previously we'd have to leave the forest, go to Kakariko Village, and get a bottle uh, via the Kako game. Yeah, so I mentioned that wrong warp trick. The one thing that is really necessary for that trick in this dungeon, the way we do it, is the bottle. So the main thing in any percent is that you need to get the bottle as quickly as you can. And so that's what the next few uh, minutes of this are going to be all about. So he's about to get uh, a trick called ISG, where he stabs the sword and gets interrupted so that it's always swinging. And uh, that's going to allow him to do a trick, hopefully, where he won't have to climb all the way to the top and jump down like he would in a casual run to break the web. So everything you're seeing around here is a setup for get item manipulation, and this is to break the web to begin. Nice. So he breaks the web but wants to stay on this floor. Nice, all right. And uh, next up, uh, we need to get out of bounds. So there's going to be a vine clip coming up. Yeah, there's a frame perfect up input to get through the wall there. Um, and then from there, we're going to do a trick called dive cancel. We need to be out of bounds to do dive cancel. And then from there, we're going to keep going with GIM. We'll explain it as we go, yeah. as we get there. The main purpose of us wanting to clip out of bounds here, like Torj was saying, is to get that dive cancel, uh, which allows us to get uh, in a state that's called item delay. Now, item delay relates to uh, especially like picking items up from underwater. Like if you think about a casual playthrough, when you pick up um, Rudo's bottle in uh, Hi in uh, Lake Hylia, um, when you pick it up from underwater. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, when you pick it up from underwater, it waits until you resurface before you get that item. And so what you notice is once Torch climbs these vines here, which yeah, you just did. Was, there it is. That was good. <laughs> if you notice the A button right there, there's a little four. That's the, the dive counter. Um, so the game essentially thinks he was underwater there. Nice. <laughs> so the next phase of get item emulation. So right now we're in a state called item delay. 
And now we need to manipulate that value. So what Torch is going to do now is he's going to climb up the vines and he's going to stand in front of the map chest. Now, because it's instead of delay, when he stands in front of the, the chest, the game will then give him a neg negated value of negative 65. So when he goes under the water and then resurfaces, the game will give him a different item, which will be the blue potion bottle. So here we go. And there it is. <laughs> now he's going to do a quick jump over across here. So this basically skips the entire dungeon. If you set up here yeah. and do a start up and roll and hold up in the correct frame, there it is. He got it. Nice. Just jump right up. <laughs> This so basically skips the entire dungeon. Now, just before, you might have seen that the text box showed that he had a compass. That's actually a glitched text box, but actually, he really just had the bottle. And uh, because he didn't actually get the Deku Nuts last time, he replaced it for a, a bottle with a blue potion in. He has to get the nuts again, um, and those will be useful for Goma. All right, all that's left with uh, the Deku Tree for now is to simply finish these scrubs and then go fight Goma. <laughs> the swag! The swag! The trap. swag! <laughs> <laughs> nice one, George. <laughs> he loves going for that in runs, by the way. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so up until this point in the run now, you've probably seen that Link now has half a heart. Because throughout the route, we need to be taking damage because at this point in the run, we need to leave Goma's room after we defeat Goma. And uh, the very simple way to do that is to jump slash into Goma while Link dies at the same time. And if you notice in like most, pretty much any dungeon, if you die in the dungeon, dungeon, it will warp you to the very beginning. So like Richard said, because we need to leave the dungeon, it's basically the fastest way for us to get out. Yeah, so the wrong walk trick, uh, the trick wrong walk actually happens in this boss room after you've beaten Goma. Uh, and we need the bottle, but uh, we can't have blue potion in it. Ooh, ooh. Stabbed barely too early there, she was still invincible. That's okay. Um, so after this fight, uh, we're going to need to go back into Kikiri Forest to get some bugs uh, in Lost Woods. So you're going to see a segment that goes from Deku Tree to Lost Woods and back again. Nice. Time for a quick donation? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We have a $100 donation from Cat Mojo, who says, closing the week with Mario World, Zelda, more Zelda, and Chrono Trigger? Just take my money already. Putting it toward naming Chrono Bort, because my wife won't let me name our new son Bort. <laughs> Love it. We're also 78,000 out of the 250,000 for that Chrono Trigger 100%, so get those donations in. That would be an awesome, awesome upgrade to see. All right, so now, like uh, glitches and stuff mentioned, we have to go get bugs, um, which is just something we need for the wrong warp. And uh, like we talked about beginning, you notice a lot of backwalking. Um, now we're introducing a new type of movement. We call this a WES, or a Water Extended Super Slide, which is done by holding a slight, like a slight position on the joystick that maintains momentum from this recoil right here. Uh. We missed it that time, but you should see some more Wests later in the run. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be heading to Lost Woods. Uh, we're going to drink the blue potion bottle, and we need to fill the contents of the bottle where we can catch something in hand. And uh, the closest thing that we have is the bugs. And this is just inside Lost Woods where the bushes are. Yeah, it's kind of cool that we're already like this far into the speed run, and we haven't left Kikiri Forest at all. <laughs> like, yeah. like, this is beating Ocarina of Time. And we haven't left the starting area of the game yet. <laughs> We're like, it's, it's such a silly category. <laughs> I love it so much. This next trick coming up is pretty cool, so uh, we'll give Torsion time to focus on this one. Yeah, this must save really hard. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Nice! 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 That was so good. So, uh, <laughs> and he got a backup as well. Yeah, that was really good. That was really good. So the hard bit, one of the hard bits about that trick is getting the right angle um, and position so that you can cross a tiny gap there. Uh, you can just like slide right past it, and he got it. it was, that was really good. All right, and now from here we are going to go perform the wrong warp. It's the trick this whole run is based around. 
Um, we now have all the tools we need. We have a bottle with bugs in it, storage shield, uh, nuts, and a deku stick. We have everything we need to beat the game, as counterintuitive as it may seem. <laughs> All right, so right now Link has Bottle in hand, and we're going to do a trick called Ocarina Items. This will allow us to interrupt the warp and take control of Link. And if we control Link for just a certain amount of frames, we'll be able to manipulate the cutscene values to send it somewhere else. So uh, let's go. Yeah, so right now the timer for the blue warp is like counting up and counting up, and it wants to warp Link away. So we're trying to do that at the exact point we go through the door. Got it. And and we got there. it. There we go. Very good. <laughs> All right. So Deku Tree goes straight to Ganon's Tower. Useful. And <laughs> you might have remembered earlier I said you need light arrows to beat Ganon Ganondorf, which you need the medallions for. Well, we just warped to just after Ganondorf died. Like the, it's, it's like just past the point where we needed all yeah. that stuff, and like we can just about then. skip it. <laughs> it's, there's so many things in this run that just barely work. It's, it's incredible. And that's not the only skip you're going to see. So the next one coming up is called Instaclip. And uh, this particular trick was uh, uh, forged by Skater. And uh, this particular setup we're going to go for. So shout out to Skater. Shout out to Skater. Shout out to Skater. <laughs> So uh, now he's going to get a hyperextended super slide. This one you get a recall off a falling rock, the damage from the rock. And uh, by getting the super slide and doing a particular setup, we should be able to skip the entire tower. So let's give it up for Torch. Let's go. We can do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. Good try. Oh, yeah. that was. We do have a backup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Really good. <laughs> so you notice we're basically falling down the entire length of that tower, skipping all of these like little uh, rooms inside the tower as you make your wave down. Um, it saves roughly two minutes in the run, which is huge for any percent. Yeah, so the way that works is you try and void out at the same time as you go through a doorway. And so it tries to put you in one of the rooms in the interior of the tower, but spawns Link right at the top because it thinks he's voided out. So he just falls straight all to the, the bottom. Down. Like, it's great. <laughs> now all that's left is the Ganon fight, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Child Link is watching that <laughs> Ganon's castle fall down. This is not <laughs> supposed to happen normally in the game. Uh, I think we have time for a donation, if there's yeah. any. There are lots. <laughs> 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 we have a uh, $165.58 donation from Interface Bar Berlin, who says, Greetings from the Interface Bar in Berlin, Germany. This donation is a group effort of a lot of our patrons and our barkeepers. We are all super hyped for the OOT speed run. Probably got time for another one as well. No problem. <laughs> we have a $200 anonymous donation who says, Hey, Zorje, good luck on the run. Excited to see you bring back OOT to GDQ. Hope you nail Waterfall West. Just don't talk to Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> I did well, nail Waterfall West. He did, yeah. You did. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, yeah. Okay, so now we're at the final fight against Ganon. So we barely have any items. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, we do need the Master Sword. So one interesting thing about this fight in particular is that Ganon knocks away the Master Sword from our hand that we don't actually have. And uh, conveniently, this will put it on the button on the, in the final phase of the fight. <laughs> uh, which is crazy, good, because yeah. you need the Master Sword to actually do the final blow on Ganon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always love this, like, you're just some kid that wakes up in a bed and then ten minutes later he's, like, poking the King of Darkness with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another fascinating thing about this fight is that in the original fight, most of the items that can do damage to Ganon, oh, true. the value ship is set down to one. But you're not supposed to have Child Link going into this fight. <laughs> so the deck stick actually does maximum damage per jump slash. And if you jump slash into this cutscene, um, then do the next trick, Infinite Sword Glitch, it only takes three hits to beat Ganon on the first phase. Yeah. Which is, funny enough, the same amount of hits it takes to defeat Goma as well. <laughs> yeah. The first boss of this game. <laughs> it's pretty great. 
Yeah. There goes the master sword. Yeah. <laughs> That'll come in handy later. Nice. Now, can he get the backflip? Got to get the backflip. And he got the backflip. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> one second time saver. Okay, one second okay. time saver. Let's go, Torch. <laughs> and here we are. The Master Sword that got knocked out of our hand. Actually, it looks like a Kikiri Sword. <laughs> yeah, it's small, but it'll do. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at the, the B button now, it's got the uh, Master Sword on it. Here we go. Right. Let's go. So coming up is the final slash, and you can only do this final slash on Ganon with the Master Sword. So it's, it's a crazy coincidence that it actually equips the Master Sword onto Child Link in the second phase of the fight here. Otherwise, the game wouldn't be completable as Child. Yeah. <laughs> We'd make it all the way here and be stuck. Yeah. yeah. And time's coming up here on the final slash here. Nice and, glowing uh, stick. <laughs> and time. Woo! Let's go. Woo! Let's go. Shout out to the Zelda community. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. Right. <laughs> Great work, man. Yeah, good work. Great yeah, job, okay. dude. Great job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Now, awesome. anyone who's curious about the history of the game and how it got to this crazy state that it is right now, um, someone called Retro made a history video about the game that carries the game from all the way when it was released until all the finds that brought any percent to what it is today. Uh, so go check that out if you're curious. And um, also, currently, my, my PB in this, also the record, is 17 minutes and one second. And sub-17 is about to happen, so that, that'll be a crazy milestone. So hopefully everyone... It's gonna happen soon. <laughs> ...check that out as well, see if that happens. And, if uh, you're interested in running this category, Torj made a tutorial that's super in-depth, super beginner-friendly, specifically for that get item manipulation, which is often, like, one of the hardest tricks to learn as a beginner. So definitely take a look at that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you guys um, want to plug your streams as well? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I'm The Weather Up There. You can find me at twitch.tv slash The Weather Up There. Uh, I'm mainly active on YouTube, where I'm uh, glitches and stuff with zeros in between instead of spaces. Um, I just upload glitch videos, so. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm twitch.tv slash Richard Sage. I'm currently fourth place on the tail of this man right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's been helping me too. And uh, yeah, so I run any percent as well. So thanks for having us, yeah. guys. We yeah. really, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. thank, thank you, so you everybody. Thank you guys. Yeah. And we hope you enjoyed the run. Well, that was a super hype, awesome run. Good work again, Torje. We have a $500 anonymous donation. Thank you so much for your support. Speaking of Zelda and donations, don't forget that your donations can be put toward that awesome, awesome grand prize. The Legend of Zelda themed replica Master Sword and Hylian Shield provided by Heroic Replicas. The minimum donation amount is $200, so a lot of these donations are totally putting you toward that potential prize. Full prize information can be viewed in the tracker and official rules are on the website. We have a $50 donation from Sebastian123. He says, going to a cookout tonight. When I asked if they were going to put on the Chrono Trigger run, they said, we're a GDQ household. <laughs> Love the show you all put out, and I'm super hyped for the rest of the night's runs. We also have a $250 donation from Jay Irwin. He says, I got distracted watching the great runs and missed the boat for OOT, so let's see all of Chrono Trigger. All right, we are going to throw over to a quick Twitch ad and we'll be back in just a moment.
All right, welcome back, everyone. We have a $500 donation from Ariel41, who says GDQ is lovely, and everyone hearing this is wonderful. We have a $150 donation from Sarah RN18. He says, after a long week at work, it feels good being able to put my part towards a great charity and a great event. Best of luck to all the runners and looking forward to watching Chrono Trigger after work today. Why are you not coming back up? I don't know. Hello. We are back up. Hello. $23 donation and 45 cents. <laughs> I can read that, right? This is from Cassie47 who says, hey, now that we beat the OOT incentive, we've got an extra 20 minutes to meet that chrono trigger 100%. Let's go 250K. <laughs> What's up, SGDQ 2019? It's Keezer on here. I am here with my last interview. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. I'm here with Quexel, Hello. who is, if you don't know, who, yeah, yeah, let's give, let's give a round of applause for Quexel. So if you didn't know already, he's kind of like the GDQ veteran. Can you kind of tell us about some of the runs you've done in the past and just how much you've enjoyed closing out GDQ? Yeah, I mean, my, uh, my, first, my first GDQ run, which was in... SGDQ 2011, actually, the very first SGDQ was was a finale run, actually. It was actually a, ra a race, too, where I went in 
hoping to lose by less than 10 minutes, ended up <laughs> winning by about 10 seconds. So, B big swing there, big swing there. <laughs> pretty, pretty surprising. And then you've just been constantly closing GDQs, and something that I kind of want to point out to people at home is like, I would expect personally that there'd be kind of like a different mindset to that. Um, like myself personally, when I've done runs, you know, it's always in the middle of the marathon, and you know, hype builds up for donations and all that stuff. But you're like directly at the end where mm -hmm. all the donations are coming in and all the hype's there. And sometimes it can be kind of hard to focus on what's going on in front of you. Yeah, definitely. Um, generally, I mean, I've, I've been doing this long enough that um, I can, if, if need be, I can just kind of get in the zone and just focus on my run. But uh, I do prepare a little bit too as far as if, if there's um, something coming up near the end of one of my runs that I know is just, it's make or break. I mean, if I, uh, if I miss just a really minor like menu input or something, we're talking like losing like 20 minutes or more or something like that. Right. In that case, I'll like, because I try to have everything memorized as far as uh, what I'm doing, but I might like have some notes readily accessible on my phone in case I feel like I kind of need, that, need to pull out, pull out that crutch in order to just ensure that I can... Uh, I can get it done without, uh, without trouble. Yeah, and you've definitely prepared a lot this time around that I've seen. I've seen you in the private practice room all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I distinctly remember last night, I saw you maybe around 5 or 6 p.m., and I come back at around 11 or 12, I'm like, he's, he's still at it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a long run. I mean, uh, I've done three full practice runs on site here since I got in, so yeah. Definitely feeling ready to go in a couple hours. Now, do you prefer doing longer runs like this, or do you have any like shorter runs that you prefer to do at all? Or uh, I, I like the variety. I mean, yeah. um, as far as kind of having a more a more condensed kind of um, action-packed uh, experience of speed running, and also a more just kind of more a more chill, longer time like when I'm at home that gives me a lot more opportunities to, uh, to chat with my stream viewers mm -hmm. and other friends and that sort of thing. Now, are there any route changes that we should expect to see now compared to what we saw way back when? Okay. Well, I mean, um, I ran Chrono Trigger for SGDQ 2017 as well, but that was actually a, um, that was actually a pretty different category. It was uh, Any Percent No Wrong Warp, which is about a... Uh, about a, a three-hour run that's pretty broken. I mean, it, uh, even without using the wrong warp, we're still uh, skipping a bunch of the bosses, glitching out our stats, and uh, using uh, RNG manipulation to make a lot of the fights we can't skip kind of play out the same every time. And then um, tonight, to close out this SGDQ, it's going to be a, uh, a glitchless run that going to be a uh, glitchless run that um, also isn't going to be using manipulation, so we're going to be assuming the 100% uh, incentive gets met, which, uh, which we'd like to see some, uh, some action on. We'll be uh, seeing pretty much the whole game as far as um, all of the b boss fights, um, all of the major side quests in the run, and uh, pretty mu all the good music and uh, stuff, and pretty much, uh, pretty much everything this amazing game has to offer. And it'd be pretty exciting to hit that, especially since we are absolutely going to enjoy closing the marathon with this. Now, since we are talking about trying to reach that incentive, it kind of reminds me of prizes. And here's the thing about prizes. We've seen the entire list of prizes up to this point in time, but I got to wonder if maybe there's some extra that we can include for you guys. Oh, Keys, there are always extra prizes available. And, uh, you know, I think we need to add them to the schedule the only way I know how. How's with, that? With a piñata, of course. What? With a piñata. <laughs> Keys, we are so close to having raised $2 million for Doctors Without Borders. And to celebrate, we're going to throw a few extra prizes on the schedule. But first, we've got to bust them out of this piñata. So, um... I'm scared. <laughs> I, I'm scared, too. Let, let's give this a shot. And I, I need you to know, Keys, that while Twexel was studying the Chrono Trigger, I studied the bat. <laughs> All right, that's a really strong piñata. Hobbs, please. <laughs> <laughs> what is it made of? <laughs> Somebody else, come on. <laughs> Bring in more people. We need assistance. My Steve. The animals are winning. <laughs> is, is, what, is the bat going to break before the piñata does? Okay. <laughs> All right, Bulletin. 
<clears throat> Finish it off. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, it uh, it looks like the, the pinata contained raisins, the worst candy. Uh, I'd like to thank Sumi for the raisins. <laughs> A picture reminding us all to save the frames. And uh, one of our fabulous bonus prizes. So, guys, we got a couple of extra things to throw on the schedule. If you donate $5 from now until the end of the marathon, you will be entered into a chance to win a Nintendo Switch. That's a $5 Nintendo Switch, theoretically. You should get those donations in. And for a $10 donation, uh, you could get entered to win these beautiful... Uh, we cufflinks that I am having trouble removing from their case. I am not a smart man. I just break pinatas on stream for fun. With a plastic bat. <laughs> look, look, I didn't say my methodology was amazing. I'm getting raisins pelted at me. But, but seriously, you got some Wii remote cufflinks. They look great. They're actually from our friend Dave at Heroic Replicas. He threw them in just for fun. And uh, someone is now putting raisins on my head. Great shot, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I got hit by, but I got hit by something. We, we are getting not pelted here. here with raisins, and we want to get pelted with donations as we get closer and closer to that two million total. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that one went in my shirt. <laughs> Please, switch terms of services. Stop that. <laughs> yes, Guys, keep in mind, get your donations in. Real quick, $50 donation is going to get you into almost everything we're talking about. You get entered into a chance to win a beautiful new Perler, a new plushie, a beautiful Chrono Trigger party print, the Chronotorious CD. Tons and tons of prizes. That beautiful Hey Navi string art up there. A uh, wonderful frog print from our good friend Marlo Dobb. We have so many prizes. You gotta go to gamesdonequick.com. You gotta check out the tracker because it's gonna have all the information you need. And I promise the tracker contains no raisins. None. Just information. <laughs> That's what you want. Hey, Puxy, you want some? Uh, sure. All right. Actually, I love raisins. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, probably the best outcome for me. Gross. Thanks, Beast. <laughs> anyway, it's going to have all the information you need on not just fruits, but upcoming games, well, all two of them that are left, <laughs> prizes, and incentives you can donate towards, like that incentive to make Chrono Trigger a 100% run. I believe we are still about 190,000 or so off of that, Pixel. <laughs> Let's get there. Let's make yeah. that happen. Let's hit that two million goal. Remember, guys, it's all going directly to charity, and we could not do this without your amazing generosity. Thank you all so much. Keys, Puexel, it's been great to be here. It's been great to have a pinata. It's been great to eat some raisins. It's great to have protected myself with the shield, yeah. which is a grand prize. Don't forget that. Don't forget about $200 minimum donation. The raisins are not prizes. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Guys, that's going to be just about all of it for us. We're going to throw it back up to the front as we get excited for Link to the Past Super Metro Combo Randomizer with our good friends Andy and Ivan. Make some noise for them. I want some more raisins. All right, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. And also some very strong opinions about raisins there, but I enjoyed that. Thank you for that interview. That was awesome. We're going to take a quick ad break. We will be right back. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. I'm Sky Bills. I'm going to be your host for this fantastic randomizer. Real quick, couple of donations here before we start. We have $150 from Sarah Aaron, who says, after a long week of work, it feels good to be able to put my heart towards a great charity and a great event. Best of luck to all runners and looking forward to watching Chrono Trigger after work today. And speaking of Chrono Trigger, we have a $1,000 donation towards that from Kay Fizzle. Who says, it's my birthday, and I don't want to just see some Chrono Trigger. I want to see all of it. Well, thank you very much for donating, and happy birthday to you. All right, we've been waiting. Here we go. Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Brand New Compromiser, with